guys, I'm Chef Leah DiBernardo. Welcome to Gather Eat Talk. So today is really special for me. I have a very special guest who's a dear friend of mine. We started cooking together, oh my gosh, in... We'll say 2012. Oh, we'll say 2012. So George Bryant, he is a New York Times uh, best-selling cookbook author. I think I'm in one of the pages or two of the pages of that cookbook. It's called it's The Paleo Kitchen. And amazing. you are in the front of it. I'm in the front. What the heck? And all the detail shots were taken at the original Eat restaurant. Oh, the original Eat. The pans, so, the spatulas, that's the produce. Right. Oh my gosh. It's almost going to be like a bit of walking down memory lane today. But we're going to cook and we're going to talk because Gather, Eat, Talk, this is what the show's about. It's about learning about seasonal ingredients, how to stay healthy through your eating, who you're supporting with your purchases of food, and then having your friends and your family around. And this is a really special day for me. Quick hug. Oh. She's like my sister. Huh. Grouchy sister. Sometimes. Bossy sister. Okay. True. So. <laughs> True. True. That's the Italian. That's a little Sicilian American in me. So we're gonna make uh, we're gonna make halibut today. Uh, local halibut from Catalina Offshore's Tommy Gums, one of my favorite fish monglers in um, San Diego. So we have a local halibut, and we're gonna do a quick pan sear on it. And we have all these strawberries that came in from Ellie's place. So I thought you would make. Uh, strawberry uh, chimichurri with, the, with with what we have here. I love it. I will say I've never done a chimichurri or anything with asparagus top, so I'm pretty stoked. And halibut is one of the fish that I enjoy because it's light and it's not fishy, so I'm super stoked on this. It is, and it's not fishy. And that's one of the things I really like about the halibut. And then just a, like a quick pre preparation of it, you always want to just run your finger down, you know, down the middle. You should um, use. A pair you of have candy. to worry about like pin bones and halibut. Well, you do, but if you're getting it from the right place, mm -hmm. you usually don't. So I just ran my finger down. Nothing's there. So have a quality fishmonger. Quality. quality, really important. And let me get the fish stink off my fingers because we don't want to mix that with anything. And so I'm going to ask you to start with your basil, your parsley, your asparagus tips, and your strawberries, and some red onion, and we'll put a little. Uh, red wine vinegar and some really good this is one of my favorite olive oils this this um, Tunisian organic olive oil they're not part of the olive oil mafia right they're not okay that's good they're not part of the your favorite canola oil mafia either but we'll <laughs> talk about that later <laughs> okay so for this you want basil parsley where's the parsley's over there I got the parsley for asparagus you asparagus tops we got strawberries we got red onion for everybody wondering and then we're going to use red wine vinegar we are we're going to toss it in red wine vinegar and a little bit of salt and i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to start helping you here i'm going to start Sweet. getting your asparagus ready i'm just going to pull these tops off Mint? asparagus i meant to say parsley this is asparagus this is asparagus and this is parsley this is parsley right is there a particular type of parsley that you enjoy you know, I like the Italian flat leaf, Got personally. It. We have the curly. I don't, I don't really know if there's any flavor difference. Do you? I don't. I don't. I didn't even know there was a difference. I asked that question not really knowing the answer. Ooh, and but look you at, went there, so. Well, I, okay, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is straight from a farm. Okay. And I love that in the middle of this local uh, parsley from Sage Mountain Farms is this little guy that tagged along, a little hitchhiker. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. There um, should be bugs in your food. And I'm, yeah, true. I'm Extra legit. protein. Legit. Don't be fearful of that. It's like, you know, chickens that are out on the pasture are so Rubs. much healthier for you because they're eating grubs or, you know, they're, they're eating worms, they're eating, they're eating bugs all day long and they're eating that soil and it goes right into your beautiful eggs and it's yeah. extra protein. Chickens are not vegetarians, just for the record. And we're not making any chicken, but oh, damn it, do dude. not buy vegetarian fed eggs, please. They're hardcore uh, carnivores, chickens. They can yeah. be beastly. You gotta be careful. They will peck your ankles, brother. Yes, they will. Okay, here's your parsley. Sweet. All right. All right, so we got basil, we got parsley, we're gonna have asparagus tops. We already have the red onion, the strawberries. You do this by taste? I totally do it by taste. But we'll put up, we're gonna put up a recipe as well for a few of you, you know, uh, at home that definitely like to follow that paper trail. Have no, don't have a problem with that at all. And while George is prepping our chimichurri, I'm gonna go ahead and season this fish and pat it dry so I'm going to do another round on that of sea salt paprika and I'm going to get some pepper on there some ground pepper 
I'm going to do both sides, George, because okay, I think cool. you should do both sides, right? Yeah, I'll I think you sides. should do both sides. Let's get all sides first. I just love how good fresh herbs taste and smell when you chop them. A little bit better than the produce section in Albertsons. <laughs> Absolutely. No offense, Albertsons. No offense. No step, offense to anyone. Step your game up. There we go. We got you know what they should do? Fresh. They should put farmer's markets inside of grocery stores. Let's talk about Red Share. Like, a farmer market and all the produce comes from local farmers that yeah. are set up in the store every single day. What's out is out, and all that bullshit and food oops waste that happens doesn't happen anymore. And we support local farmers. No, and then it's, you know, the thing is, because you go into a grocery store, I'm patting the fish dry, by the way. Once you get your herbs on it, you want to give it a nice, gentle pat. And that pulls a little bit of the moisture out, and it also just, like, gets those herbs into your, your protein. Uh, but, you know, the thing about the grocery stores these days is, like, like, I don't know about you, but I shop around the perimeter. I don't even bother going into the middle because that's where mostly, like, all the processed crap is. That's where all anyway. the marketing happens. That's where all the marketing happens. And we want you to eat clean and hyper-fresh, and it would be so cool to have a farmer's market I was, in the grocery I don't know why I didn't store. think about it so right now, but when you think about it, like, the biggest problem with grocery stores, like, one of their biggest things is loss. Right and waste. They oh, it's for like huge. 20, it's like 50, 50, it's, no, it's something crazy it like 50,000 tons or, oh my, no, I think it's higher than that, but I don't want to misquote. It is an, an, it's an immense problem in this country and throughout Europe, the waste, because we don't want anything that's ugly. Blemish, Like bruised. today, if you look at this, it's kind of an ugly orange, but guess what? I'm going to use this orange. This is a beautiful orange. For sure. You cut it open and you have a regular orange just because it's not perfect or this onion isn't perfect doesn't mean we shouldn't use it. So food waste is a problem in our grocery stores. I'm glad you brought that up while I'm going to get this. You're going to fancy the fish. Well, you do that. I'm going to finish making this chimichurri. So I chopped the parsley. I chopped the basil. I'm just going to do the asparagus tops. So do you recommend these or like for flavor? Because we have you know, six of them. I, I just, again, again, it's super fresh and we just got it in. And I thought, let's just like do a fine chop and get those tips in there. Because I think on top of the halibut, yep. it's going to taste amazing. So gang super hot pan. I use, I love to use avocado oil when I can afford it in my budget. I also like grapeseed oil. And I'm going to get that pan nice and hot. I want that oil so it's, you can just kind of see a little bit of steam coming off, a little bit of smoke. You want that because your pan needs to be hot enough to accept that uh, piece of meat. Uh, because every piece of meat is different in, in its fat, right? Mm -hmm. So some are fattier, some are leaner. You want it to be super hot, and then it's not going to stick to your pan. So I'm going to get my fish in here, making sure that it's got a little bit of that oil on it. I know in the restaurant that I do use uh, an organic expeller press, cold press, uh, canola oil, but I use that because for restaurant sake, we, we can't always afford avocado oil and grapeseed oil in mass quantities, right? For sure, and I think it's an important note, whether people come to your restaurant or they shop in general, like, uh, one of the things I feel like is under-talked about in our current environment when we talk about gathering and eating is food costs. Like, we yeah, as a country absolutely. pay less for our food than every other country, and we expect the highest quality for the cheapest price. And it's Always. Like a good tattoo isn't cheap, and a cheap tattoo isn't good, and it's the, same thing, the same thing with food. So. You have to remember, and like not to be cheesy or like a postcard, but what you invest in your food literally does save you. You need to shut time. up and come see this. I don't. Come see this. Yeah, come see this. Look at it. That looks so amazing. beautiful, right? That oh my amazing. gosh, it's beautiful. No, but I concur 100%. I just mm -hmm. wanted you to see the fish because. No, let's not. Now, when, when you're cooking halibut, are you cooking so it's like white and opaque all the way through, or a little pink? Like, how do I, you. I. I. I leave a little bit of pink in the middle. One, I know where my fish is from, yeah. right? I trust it, I trust my source. So I'm going to get a beautiful seared brown on the top, almost a crispy. I want a little bit of that crispy flavor on top of my fish. Got it. Um, and then I'm gonna, it's, it's only gonna go for about maybe max eight minutes in the pan. Got it. You could also just sear it, yeah. sear the top, sear the bottom, and then and stick oven. it in the oven, Got it. right? Got it, cool. Okay, so, awesome. chimichurri, parsley, basil, asparagus tops. I'm gonna add my red onion. We have these micro beet sprouts. Look at these. Do you wanna use those in, but then also as a garnish? Because those are really pretty. And they you wanna put really some good. in there and there, or just yeah. put some in the salad? No, let's do both. We're gonna do both. Why not? We can do both. And I'm gonna wash my hands and get that fish off of it. Uh, I, I know need a mini fork. You need a the mini fork? A stirring instrument. Let me get you a stirring instrument. I need a stirring instrument. What a Awesome. So we have our basil, our parsley, our red onion, our strawberry, our asparagus tops, and then we have our 
Red wine. We have red wine vinegar and some really good olive oil. Probably be better. Why don't you want to mix it in here? You toss it in there. Okay. Yeah. Let me get this out of your way. A little bit better. I love you. I, I love when the chef space. does the work for me. I want you to have the space. I, I love the space. I do forget, like people forget, I wrote that cookbook in an 82 square foot kitchen. He did. And he did all the, the testing of the recipes in, your kitchen. in this kitchen. And it was, <laughs> no, but it was really kind of amazing experience for all of us. It was. I had the, the chef and the YouTube top chef. Working on a fun. cookbook in a professional kitchen, which was, it was a really amazing experience. It was, it was, it was it, good. It's um, just what we both learned about food. We learned from each other because I was just getting into paleo cooking. George was immersed in it. And I was learning how to cook all of a sudden with, we call them unconventional, unconventional ingredients. I don't really think they're unconventional. I think it's the way we should eat. They're real. The real ingredients, like your nut flours and coconut and using banana and flax in place of eggs. I mean, that was, that was a cool experience. Totally was. Totally was. How's that fish doing? Fish is looking really beautiful. Cherry cherry smells amazing. Do, uh, should I do, you know, some salt to taste in here? Like, what would you do, chef? I think you need, let's get your olive oil. Yep. Let's get your, I would say about a quarter cup of olive oil. Let's get a squeeze of lemon, but I stole your knife. Here you go. I'm walking around with this bowl. I want to go back. This is how it always is in my kitchen. I will have it no other way. We're doing a lot. There's a, there's a lot of conversation going on. Normally there's wine, but I forgot the wine today. I would totally be drinking for breakfast right now. That's, That's the other thing. What I love about cooking shows is everybody thinks like you're cooking. Most of these things are filmed at like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. You have to like wake up early, get makeup at like five. That's why I don't like going on TV cooking shows. So, but yeah, we can we can that. do wine for breakfast. That looks absolutely amazing. So these are our smaller cuts. They're already done, and um, I just tap the top, and it's you just want a little bit of give, just a little bit of give. It's kind of like if you just touch your, you know, your if you make a fist and then. You see that little bit of give. Same thing goes with red, with with your meat, right? Yeah. You know that that's well done if you make a hard fist. If it's a soft fist, it's medium. If it's not, you know, if it's not a whatever. There's yeah. No, just a regular fist like this, and you hit that. That's rare. Well, like I think that leads to a good point, right? So like you are trained as a chef and an amazing one, right? Oh well, thank you. I use Google and YouTube to figure this out, right? And I think one of the biggest challenges that I see in my audience online and trending right now is that people look at cooking or eating healthy like it's this difficult thing. And I feel like we've like almost trained people to overcomplicate it when it really isn't that difficult. Like the worst mistake you can ever make cooking is that it doesn't taste good and you never make that mistake again. Absolutely. And, and, then, then, and then you just have to remake it. I think we were on the show last time when I was doing uh, platters for graduation and one of the things, you always make mistakes. Professional chefs make mistakes. I was using a serrated, I was watching the show and I'm using a serrated knife to cut my mushrooms. Like, you need to use a serrated I'm like, why the fuck am I using in my mind? I'm like, why am I using this knife? But then you just still, you're, you're still cooking. So it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay that this didn't come out the way that you thought it should or it looks like the picture. This is making food and it's experimenting and there's so much joy for sure. in what we're doing right now. This tastes amazing, by the way. I love the aromatics of like the fresh herbs, the, the lemony, the twist. I love like the coating of the olive oil. Mm. That's an amazing olive oil, by the way. This is beautiful. But this tastes absolutely amazing. So, like for me, because we do have two different backgrounds. Go ahead. What are you putting in there? I'm now? just gonna put a little bit of organic agave. Oh, just a little. Just finger. a little bit, um, to cut through that red wine because the red wine vinegar is. It does. It's a little. It's a, a little, little acidic. But the thing about vinegars is that they're all different. So you have to know the vinegar that you are purchasing. Red wine vinegar has different flavors across the board, different brands, mm -hmm. right? Rice, wine, all of them. Now the thing about when you make your chimichurri is it is going to need to sit because you want it all to kind of break down. You want those acids and the vinegars to break your herbs down. You want the strawberry to break down a little bit too. And so sometimes I will let it sit for at least an hour, if not up to three hours before we use it. Got it, yeah. And so like for me, when we get into this and in cooking, because I, I will say what I think is and like this isn't, this may even be a humble brag, but like two years before I was a New York Times bestselling cookbook author, I'd never cooked before in my life, ever. 
ever, right? And I think that gave me a unique perspective and why Lee and I get along so well because we have two different ends of the spectrum. But when we meet in the middle and like what Leah does with eat, gather and at the restaurant and everything here, it's all about harnessing like the best quality ingredients, the simplest of processes, which create the most simplistic, healthy, delicious meals. And so like for me, just so everybody knows, like when I started cooking, when I started paleo, I didn't go into the kitchen with cookbooks and all this stuff. I picked one ingredient, like one protein, and I had chicken. And I'm like, I'm gonna make, and it was chicken thighs, because they are my absolute favorite. Bone in, skin on chicken thighs. So much better for you, really. Yep. And I found a recipe, and I'm like, I'm gonna make this recipe. And I'm gonna make this recipe over and over until I remember right. this recipe, and I don't need the instructions. You, that was totally your gig. Like, that was that how was, I did it all. That was your thing. And then what I did from that is once I knew that recipe, I was like, cool, I'm not gonna change the recipe. I'm gonna change an ingredient in the recipe and try to create a different result. And so I based all my cooking and all my learning very simply on using one base recipe and then adjusting when I went. And this, That's you right. can use this in paleo, you can use this whole 30, and, you can use this probably anywhere do it that you too. go. We do it professionally as well. And what you're talking about is relevant. Yeah, it's amazing and it's amazing. So like for people that are wondering, cause I am quote unquote paleo, right? What paleo, those look amazing. What paleo is, show me to smell it, I ate it. Um, you know, what paleo is is really yeah, for me, nutty. Paleo is like a, that is really really nutty. That's yeah. amazing though, and I love. It's a, but you taste the beet. You know you the do. thing is, is, it's that earthy. It's the earthy. People say beets taste like dirt, but it's really we we call it earthy, and that just tastes like that. Well, I feel like everyone should say that because when we were kids, we ate dirt, which is why we know what it tastes like. More kids these days should eat dirt. They do need to eat dirt, and I cut you off, and you were saying something. And no, no, like, what I, what I was saying, no, no, I'm totally fine. Like what I what I was saying is when we look at like paleo. Paleo is a set of guidelines, right? But they're nothing more than a left and right lateral limit. Yeah. And basically for me, paleo is an experimentation to learn what makes you feel good, what makes you feel bad, okay. and then to make an adjustment as you go. So yes, there's parameters that we say, no gluten, no grains, no dairy, right? But there's not dogmacy in any of this. You should cut out gluten, grains, mm -hmm. dairy, and any inflammatory foods for 30, Absolutely. 60 days so your body can reset. But then once that point comes forward, this is all experimentation. Our bodies evolve every day. People evolve food allergies. They evolve like intolerances that they hadn't had before. Lactose intolerance goes away. And you're, you're going to discover like, that, you know, especially on this diet, because you will detox. If you start eating paleo or keto or Whole30, you will your body goes through a form of detoxing when you get percent. to clean food. Period. For before. sure. So I'm going to, all right, so Salad. we okay, we made our chimichurri. That is We marinating. have our fish, that is marinating. The chimney, strawberry chimichurri is marinating. And I we have, have green all in my teeth. You have green in your teeth, that's okay. I have purple in my teeth. Da, 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 da. All right, we have our mizuna and we have our arugula that came in from um, Love Ellie. I would drink, you want to know a good olive oil test? What? Before you ever use it, see if you would drink it. If you would drink your oh olive oil, God. you should well, cook it. Yeah, because this is amazing. That's how this this is. Absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. well, that's how this that's how this started. I was going through a cooking, sh um, uh, not a cooking. Did I go what, to no, what are those big? A cat. No, no, no. Those. Uh, anyway, it was a plate. Well, I'm I, not gonna bathe in the oil, I, olive oil like I was going through a tasting, a big tasting with hundreds and so hundreds good. of olive oils. Get that spice. Yeah. On the back, it's so awesome. And I'm going around doing that and licking them off my hand. This one guy comes up to me and like, do you think you clean your hand before you do that? I'm like, your bottle's not touching it. <laughs> like, I need to really taste this before well, I buy it. I think this is this is a perfect opportunity to talk about the quality of ingredients as well. Like, we're making let's a salad. Let's do it, and let's dress this. Yeah, our Simple chimichurri dress. is done. Our so, salad, what olive is oil, in here? Olive oil, rice wine vinegar, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. It's going to go on top of the fish. Got it. What is, what do we have in we're this. just we're just gonna do mizuna and arugula and we're going to do these beautiful little beet sprouts. No, That's I know I know what top. arugula is and I know yeah. what mizuna is, but yeah. what is mizuna? For okay, else? mizuna is okay. I'm gonna show you. Okay, that is helpful. I'm a visual learner. There you go. So right, and it's a member. Believe it or not, it's a member of the spinach family. Now, like, and then what's we've the got our the the taste of it is again, it's a little nutty. Okay. Um, it's and it's a little grassy. This arugula is. Is, is spicy. It's a baby arugula, but look at how pretty it is. Just picked from the farm. And when you have a farmer like Ellie from Solidarity who cares, she cares so deeply about her food, this is what you're going to get. That crazy. So let's toss it. Amazing. All right. By the way, thank you. I what are we tossing with? Rice, Rice wine? wine vinegar, a little bit of, let's go ahead and use our, um, what's that salt called again? I forget uh, what that Him called Himalayan. Again. Himalayan, thank you. I think you forget things sometimes. All right, and then our olive oil, a little bit of pepper. And you want to light dress this in this bowl? I do, just okay. like this. Cool. And I'm going to check our strawberry bread. 
So when you guys are doing this, uh, you can always add more dressing, but you can't take it away. So when you do this and you're creating these flavors and you're blending all of these different herbs and you know different spinaches and lettuces, don't go crazy. Like lightly dress it, taste it, and make sure that it's going to complement your food. So just put a little bit of oil, toss I'm it. Doing that. <laughs> no, you can like Leah's, Leah's Vanna Whiting behind me. Right, and so we want to make sure that we salt this, we want to do all of this stuff, right? And so like I didn't use all of your rice wine vinegar, but I just like personally, I can't stand overdressed salads. Well, unless the salad tastes like crap and I want more of the dressing. Absolutely. That's and one it. of the things that um, I worked on with George in the very beginning was I have a, a basic rule in the kitchen, make sure everything's dressed. If you have a sandwich, make sure that bread is dressed and you grill it. Make sure that your greens you're putting on your bread are dressed before you put it on the sandwich. Make sure there's some salt and pepper or some olive oil on your tomato. Yeah. Make sure everything is dressed and layered because that's it can be simple and you can put three ingredients, but you're going to get uh, a beautiful flavor. What I, why I love learning and, and more com and from, more from you yes. and chefs in general mm -hmm. is because what a lot of people don't understand, and it took me years to understand this, is that the simplest dishes are the most amazing. Mm -hmm. But not everybody can recreate it because not everybody understands the depth of flavor and the Absolutely. different modalities of flavor from the sight, the touch, the smell, the crunch, the texture. And so what I love and what I learned from you and when I look at any of this stuff, stay simple with your food. Stay simple with your ingredients. But you can try different things. Like think about the fact when you make that burger and you put a tomato on it. Before you put the tomato on it, mm -hmm. grill it. And then when you're done grilling it, put some balsamic on the Absolutely. tomato. Absolutely. It'll bring like, that sugar out. For sure. So there like... I think simplicity is the, the key to all of this. It absolutely is. It's keep it easy. And with this, like we're going to go ahead and we're going to start plating this. I mean, obviously you're going to want your chimichurri uh, to, you want it to marinate a little longer, but I want to go ahead and plate it. And I want to talk, let's talk about wine a little bit. I'll talk about wine all day. But now is wine, okay, hold on a second. But is wine paleo? Great question. Okay. I love it's it. a complicated answer. But it's really, it's, it's, it's kind of simple. So traditional wine, yeah. uh, if we're talking... What do you mean traditional wine? When we're talking, I'm going to explain traditional. Like I'm talking European, dry irrigation, no additives, no added sugar. Okay. Totally. Right? But so the way it should be The done. way that wine should be oh done. So when goodness. you look at it, 51% of the wine in the U.S. is owned by one of three companies. It's a massive wine conglomerate. 50%. 51%. Kind of reminds me of the meat, the, the meat industry and the big three that own everything. For sure. And so in the U.S., they're approved to add up to 84 additives to a bottle of wine. 80. Not to mention God. that sulfites are only limited to be under 300 parts per million. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how they get away. They operate it. Deep purple is the most added ingredient to wine. 84% of wine has purple coloring added because people associate good wine with red tea. So you, hear, you kind of hear where we're going with all of this. So there's paleo, keeping it real, real, keeping it, you know, keeping it simple. Yep. Right. Um, so you can have wine on the paleo diet, but you, you know, we talked about this when we talked to Debbie with coffee, and I know I won't oh, even get it started on that. We'll go coffee another day. What we're day. putting in coffee, what we're putting in wine, what we're putting in our food, what we're putting in our flowers. So many people are. Um, have a problem with flour, and it's not even because of the glutens, it's because nope. of the mold and the toxicity that's in the flowers, right? Same we're thing. Storing, storing it. So Coffee, we, flowers, foods. We could talk about this stuff forever, because we have for years. Well, that's why we have a podcast, too. That's right. But I, I will say, to too. close that thought before yeah. we go into your loop, is wine paleo? It can be, right? And Good. so, like, what I use, I work with a company, and I've worked with this company for a long time, but I find people that are educated about wine, importers, people that understand, because, like, Europe... In Europe, uh, where our wine is imported from, they are only keep approved. Going for my wine while you're talking. They about are only this. approved to add up to three additives to a bottle. Sulfites are regulated to be under 75 parts per million okay. versus 300, which that's a lot of where like the hangover comes from. Sure. The glucose dysregulation, Absolutely. the sugar it makes crashes, sense. and then everything is dry. There's no water added to the mm -hmm. irrigation. There's nothing added to the barrels in the fermentation process. There's no Natural sugar slow. added to help it ferment faster. It's all very, very done. Slow food, slow, slow food, everything. Slow wine. Um, and so the question is like, how do you educate yourself? How do you find yeah. it? You find somebody that talks about it. Google's an amazing thing. YouTube's an amazing thing. I always ask somebody local, right? There's restaurateurs like you. There's uh, like food influencers. There's cookbook authors. Absolutely. There's local wineries. And there's things here that are always in, and like on the, by the way, on the, on the back of the bottle with like the wine thing, I yeah. can't read mine because they're all in a different language. Yeah. So I just trust my importer and where they come from. Sure. And that, and it, it is about asking. We talked about this on one of the other shows 
and we talk about it on the coffee podcast with Deb. Ask. Ask your chefs. Ask, ask your roasters, ask the people you're buying your products from, and do try to shop more local. I know it's not possible in every respect, nope. I mean, come on. But um, I, I still want you to ask questions so you know what you're putting in your body. So we know that uh, wine, you can have wine it on the paleo be. diet. Totally. You're not going to want to have wine on the paleo diet when you're detoxing in your first... No, for, for right? sure. I would say like 30, 60 days. But, but also to remember too, what in my opinion, would make wine paleo or not paleo, yeah. like straight from the source, right? So when you do these, like I work with a company called Dry Farm Wines, my friend Todd owns the company, and um, what's, what's amazing is every single bottle has less than one gram of sugar, okay. less than one gram of carbs, and oh. under 50 parts per million That's of awesome. sulfites. And so they test every kill single me. bottle and batch when they come in. Okay. And so when I look at that, I'm like, yes, that is technically supportive. It's paleo. It's naturally fermented. There's no sweeteners added. And so, like, can I enjoy this while eating this paleo lifestyle? And but the I answer love, is yes. But I love what that they're doing. And that's a lot of what paleo is about. Yep. It's like, where's my food coming from? What are they doing with it? Where are they getting it from? And how are they treating it? thousand percent. So, this looks phenomenal, by the way. Yeah, and I'm kind of thinking that I want maybe the salad. I don't know. I have to think. I'm just can we? I think I want to taste it too. Well, I, I do, and then I think the beet microgreens, like just for a right little here, let's try on top of the halibut. Here. You do that. So we're okay, having cool. fun with this. So this is going to be um, our lunch today. Yeah, and for anybody that's wondering too, like all these questions, things I've mentioned, this is why we have a team. They're taking notes, and everything's going to be linked below. Um, and when Chef Leah gives me permission to share the link to everything I'm talking about, then we'll make sure that's in there too. Absolutely, um, because we, we do. We want you to have this knowledge. That's why we do what we do. This is the, I think it's the only reason. Well, well you do like to talk. Right? I and love I to talk. I do love to cook. You like to talk too. <laughs> we like to talk over each other and see who can win the situation. Just a little bit, but but you know, George has so much knowledge, and I'm excited that you're here today to share your knowledge it's on Gather Eat Talk with um, with our. Can I give an olive oil tip too? You can absolutely give. We an mentioned olive oil. we mentioned the olive oil mafia, right? And I said, taste your olive oil. Make sure you use like if you won't eat your olive oil, you should not dress, use, cook. Totally Which true. you shouldn't be cooking with olive oil anyways, unless it's super, super, super low heat because it turns rancid, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, That's then right. you get oxidized fat and inflammation. It and doesn't pain. have a high smoke point. Nope. nope. And, and it's not just because it doesn't have a high smoke point, we don't want you to use it because, as George was just saying, it turns rancid. It's yep. really bad for the body. Yep. And that is why like high smoke point oils, again, uh, grapeseed and avocado and organic cold pressed canola as long as you're using that a little bit at home you don't want to use it too too much don't use vegetable oil don't use um, and don't use beautiful olive oil to cook, um, to, to cook. i will and say with olive oil there's an easy way to tell when you look at it any good olive oil will tell you the harvest date and yes. the best buy expiration date and i think that one does too i'm going to grab the bread go for it i'm excited Please. and so when you look at your olive oil um, and they're literally Google this. There is an olive oil mafia. There is a multi-billion dollar industry for false, cheap olive oil. So they cut it with uh, all yeah, different kinds of oils. Here. They'll cut it with canola oil. They'll cut it with all these different cheap oils and soybean oil. And they'll pass it off as olive oil. And that's where a lot of the problems come from. So any olive oil, like this one is featured. It literally tells Georgia me bread. when it was pulled and then when it's best before buy. So this thing is literally only good for 18 months, which tells me it's fresh. It's there, it's one ingredient, nothing's caught. So just check the quality while Leah wants to eat the strawberry bread. Gosh. All right, so we made two things today. Yeah, let's go over um, what we made. So we made this beautiful local halibut uh, that came from San Diego, uh, Tommy Gomes, Catalina Offshore. And we just did a really simple pan sear, a high heat pan sear. We made strawberry chimichurri, which has parsley and basil and red onion, a little bit of red wine vinegar and good oil and a little bit of agave because we needed a little bit more sweetness, right? And this is our final plate with our mizuna and our arugula salad with beet sprout tops. And then George and I, just for the heck of it, this was kind of my tribute to him. We have um, bananas, almond flour, uh, what else, eggs, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of baking soda, and uh, did I say almond flour? Almond did I say flour, yep. flour? Yep. We're going to, we're going to see. I'm going to see if it comes out. Buttered it. Oh my gosh, look at that! That's pretty good. Oh, I'm gonna stick my face in it! Here, let me see the pan. Oh, see the pan? I'll just taste the crumbs in the pan. Alright. Be so, careful with pans, too. This one's not too hot, but don't okay. grab hot. That is so good. Alright. Okay, so it is a little, it's a little wet. 
I could have probably let it go a few more minutes, but that's okay because this is something George and I just kind of pulled out of our hat. This is so good. It's so good, right? I it, it reminds me of like a bread pudding texture. Yeah. Like I could crumble this. Yeah, butter. Oh. Yeah, butter. This is so good. Mm. It's really delicious. Literally, it's amazing. I don't have a good chocolate color. Mm. This is the best part about food shows. Mm. See, but real ones on the TV, they don't put food in their mouths. We do. What We're good. Not? This is, you should taste your food. You should love. <laughs> this is phenomenal. And this is delicious. Honestly, like one of our famous recipes, the best recipe is just a banana bread. And what I love about paleo, quote unquote, or whole foods or slow food is that you just use real ingredients. You use things that come together. Like Look at that. your box brownies Beautiful. have 57 ingredients in them. Oh, this has faith. six. Has six ingredients. And George and I started, he started messing around with his banana bread when we were at the old eat, the little store yep. in Jefferson and Overland. And he would not stop until he came up with that <laughs> recipe that worked. He had a pan, he did a pancake okay, with it. Waffles. He did his bread. He did waffles, and yeah. it was just the coolest thing. Experimenting back in the For day sure. before anybody was really doing this, and we've learned a lot from each other. And we're really happy that we had the opportunity today to bring it to you. And we, oh, George, you're going to be on my podcast. I am going to be on your podcast. Podcast coming up soon. Yep. So make sure you tune in to the podcast as well. Gather, eat, talk with civilized caveman, George Bryant, um, New York Times, cook, best-selling cookbook author. It is always a mouthful when you're here with us. I love you so much. I appreciate you. You're Aww. amazing. Aww. Yay. Thanks for having me. Thanks for cooking. Anytime. I'll cook anytime. Let's try this fish. Let me get some forks. Any closing tips? Like, oh, hey, wait, wait, wait. Because I have closing one. Tips. I have one. Please. Do you have one? Well, you go first. You're my guest. The most important tip is to enjoy yourself and have fun. There's no point in cooking, sourcing quality ingredients, or trying to change your lifestyle when you dread it, you don't enjoy it, or it's not going to make a big difference. So take time to respect the craft, to respect mm -hmm. the cooking to prepare your body, to prepare your mind, to prepare everything. So when you do eat, it's nourishment, it's value. You understand it's the fuel for your body. Yes. Not the poison that's taking time off the end of our body. So treat it right, treat your body right. You have a limited warranty and it's super, super important that we take care of that. Amen to that. Slow down just a little bit. And the conviviality that happens with friends and family around the, the table and in the kitchen is so vital for our lives. So just enjoy. And have fun with it. And I'm gonna keep eating this bread off the counter. Oh, Dude, the fish though. Thanks, guys. Mm. Thanks, guys. Thanks for turning in. I gotta eat this fish. This strawberry. This is a beat. Ooh, it's like a mu- now, now I'm into it because it's like a music video. B-roll shot. Cue white snake music. B-roll.